Hi and welcome to a very special edition of the show where we let the metal do the talking. Tonight's programme is coming to you from Dusseldorf in Germany where we've hooked up with one of the heaviest tours known to metal kind, the Gods of Grind. And coming up over the next two and a half hours you're going to be seeing interviews and live performances from the four bands involved, namely Confessor, Cathedral, Carcass and Entombed. Plus we'll be showing you a selection of the most extreme and brutal videos imaginable. Now, as this is the first time that Headbangers Ball has dedicated an entire program to thrash, speed and death metal, I've invited a very special guest presenter along to help me out with the show and maybe give it another perspective. I'm very pleased to welcome Millet Petroza from Top German Thrashers Creator. Welcome Millet. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm really looking forward to the gig tonight. What, what do you think of the lineup tonight? Yeah, um... I think it's a very interesting bill. Actually, it's four bands, and each band has its own style, so it should be real interesting. Great. Okay. Well, watch out for Millet throughout the show, and he will also feature in our profile of the German rock scene, which is going to be coming up a little later on, so watch out for that. But for now, all I need to say is that this is, without doubt, the heaviest ever edition of the show that's more than metal from the Gods of Grind in Dusseldorf, Germany. Headbangers Ball. This is Tom G. Warrior's Celtic Frost. You're tuned to the Gods of Grind special on MTV's Headbangers Ball. Your source for what I'm told is the heaviest, wildest, and most radical music in television. Hi, it's Miller Petrosa from Creator for Headbangers Ball. And I'm sitting here on the tour bus of Cathedral. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey, how's it going, Governor? All right, not too bad. Doing fine. So how you feel being on this tour? You have a lot of fun? But it's been all right. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh -huh. um, it's like playing the shows is great. Uh -huh. It's just the bits in between where you get like a bit disillusioned with where you are, who you mm -hmm. are, and all that kind of stuff. You know, living on a mobile home for uh -huh. three weeks and stuff, uh -huh. and just utilizing nocturnal alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your influences range from the '70s progressive bands to some of the new wave of British heavy metal to folk music. Well, yeah. And um, do you think your music incorporates all these styles? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we all listen to different stuff outside of that as well. So I guess everything we listen to, like, sort of filters through us individually and in what we eventually come out with. But um, I guess the main, the main like, sphere we draw our influences from is uh, the seventies. Yeah, and we're not trying to like uh, recreate the seventies, just to, like uh, getting the groove from it. Mm -hmm. With a very much 90s sound, I think. Mm -hmm. um, what did you achieve on the new version of Soul Sacrifice that you didn't on the album version? What did you decide to produce yourself? Um, well, basically, the stuff we were out on, I mean, when we started Cathedral, it, I mean, we didn't really... Uh, the main emphasis we had was being really slow and heavy, you know. Mm -hmm. Just as not necessarily a reaction against death metal and extremely mm -hmm. fast music just that we've been listening to bands like Trouble and St. Vitus for a long time and these bands hadn't really achieved anything not nowhere near what they deserve to have achieved you know and so we just like took their most extreme parts and tried mm -hmm. to generate them across you know mm -hmm. but so I guess like the songs on the album come from that period when we first performed you know and when we actually wrote all the stuff, when we actually recorded all the stuff for the album, we realised it was all just totally slow and totally miserable and totally heavy, which we, was what we were into. Mm -hmm. But we, we needed something to break it up a bit, I guess, and like self sacrifice is more up tempo. And we didn't want to, we don't want people just to see us as being uh, just slow and heavy and nothing else, you know. I think it's just reflected our uh, progression, really. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like, um, the reason we produce it ourselves is because know the sound that we're after. We know exactly what we want as a band, you know. We don't want somebody else coming in and telling us what we want, because what's the point when we know it mm -hmm. ourselves, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And, um, like with the new EP we've done, it was uh, all very spontaneous, really, because the songs were written as in just riffs on a cassette or something. And uh, because we all live so far apart, it's, we very rarely rehearse. So we very, we really, don't know exactly at the end of the day how the actual thing is going to come out, but um, we all just like sit at home, 
putting our own thoughts into it and like when we go in the studio it all comes together like that you know so you guys have a new drummer right yeah, yeah. so uh, i think he fits in a lot better uh -huh. than uh, i mean you see on the album that was just a guest drummer anyway mm -hmm. he was a friend of ours from america from a band called penance mm -hmm. because we lost our other drummer like about three months previous to the recording and we had to record our album so i mean the drummer on the album he came over like a week before we recorded and he had a week to learn all the songs mm. And we just went straight in the studio and did it. But now I think uh, with this new drummer, we've got like a lot more of a punch to what we're doing. You know, yeah, a he's a more, great drummer. A lot more um, of a solid uh, sort of bass thing. Okay, I think we we want to check out your video right now. Yeah. Here's um, Cathedral with Ebony Tears.
Hi, this is Miller from Creative for Headbangers Ball. I'm still here with Cathedral. Um, I want to know what, what experience did you make with your previous bands and did, that you put to good use for Cathedral? Um, well, I mean, I learned a lot of uh, the bad aspects of the music industry from the mm -hmm. previous band I was in because we were just like totally um, fresh to the whole music industry, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't have a, any clue. We were just like, when our first record came out, we were just so happy to have an album out mm -hmm. without sort of fully understanding the business side of it and uh, we got ripped off a lot on the, along the way and uh, fell into a lot of traps which we couldn't really uh, which I felt I couldn't really get out of and uh, you know um, ended up sort of trying to please an audience mm. instead of pleasing ourselves you know well that's speaking for myself personally and uh, I just got you know pretty uh, tired with the whole thing because we weren't really getting out of it what we should have been getting out of it because I mean we we're selling a hell of a lot of records and getting a hell of a lot of coverage and we're still like living on virtually like ten pounds a week mm -hmm. or something like that you know mm -hmm. so I think we have more with the, with this band we have more of a idea what direction we want to go in ourselves and what we want to achieve and, and stuff so in your lyrics did you updated the fantasy theme for the 90s or? Mm -hmm. I don't think we're how do you mean fantasy? Fantasy, just your lyrics, are they like fantasy or more real stuff? Not at all, they're very real. Very real, real from the heart, I suppose. Uh -huh. I mean, they might, they're written in a way yeah, that... See, the, the cover, uh, I've seen your cover, you know, yeah. it kind of reminds me, um, like, um, kind of like a, some stuff, you know, like an ancient... I don't think it's, it's not fantastical, it's more like symbolic. Symbolic. I think, mm. it's like a... I think it represents the struggle of good and evil, life and uh -huh. death. Is it? Uh, There's a lot more things involved there. I mean, the sort of lyrics we we write are very much from our own experiences, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. to, to us, they're very uh, basic, but because they've come from ourselves, <coughs> we you don't want to give ourselves away too easily. So they are often disguised in a way that might uh, I see. So that might sort of. Uh, they're not directly. No. Yeah. More metaphorical, uh -huh. I think. So is it does the the cover artwork? Is it an ancient pic picture or is it like a more? No, more it's um, it's a friend of mine uh -huh. uh, designed it specially for us. Oh, He's I just a great like, artist. <laughs> yeah, I just gave him some ideas and that's what he came uh -huh. up with. You know, it's really cool. So how do you see yourself fitting in the in the old spectrum of heavy rock? Um, I just think we've got something uh, alternative to offer. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I'll. Alternative and also like a, we've got a groove from like a, the 70s going there, so that's you know mm -hmm. what we don't feel gonna, us we don't yeah, feel that we should be fitting into one kind of category like yeah. death metal, grind no. or doom metal or whatever. We just want to. So you don't like to be categorized at all? Not really. No. Uh, I understand that. So next on we we um see the new video by C O C. Good lads. Yes. Hi, this is Miller from Creator again, and. Um, so with Cathedral, you told me before that you don't, didn't want it to be categorized. Um, how do you feel being on that Gods of Grind tour? I think it's great for us in a way. I mean, um, we like a challenge. We like an audience that um, we feel we have to, I don't know, challenge in a kind of uh -huh. a way for personal gratification or something. I don't know. But I mean, we play with a lot of different bands. Like, for instance, we recently played with the Young Gods and we've like done tours with like other bands like St. Vitus and stuff mm -hmm. and um, the Gods of Grind thing is I think it's great for us because we thought we didn't really come out with any big expectations that people are going mad mm -hmm. about us and stuff but we've been getting a really good uh, audience response every night and we've been playing really well I mean the majority of audience is, is like a death metal audience and mm -hmm. I think it proves that they are sort of that audience is looking for something a bit mm -hmm. different you know because it's been like going on for so long the same old standard mm -hmm. death metal thing you know which hasn't really developed into anything else except sheer aggression you know uh -huh. we, we just want to put a bit more soul and emotion into it and cool. luckily like the audience is responding to it so all right what do you think about headbangers ball doing a whole show about that kind of music now uh i th i don't know i mean every band on this bill is very uh has the very own distinctive kind of style I think it's, I guess it's because the main two bands are probably just about to reach their peak, I think. 
that MTV are like mm -hmm. doing this big thing on them. I don't know if, uh, I mean for us, I don't know if we actually, uh, it's pretty weird, you know, because <laughs> we've only just had our first album out and uh -huh. stuff, and same with Confessor, you know, it's like, uh, it's great, obviously it's great that so early in our career that we're going to be featured on this big MTV special, but, um, it's, it's still a bit strange to us that we are, you know. <laughs> And it's strange in a good way, though, obviously. Oh. Obviously, any any kind of uh, publicity like this is obviously great for us. So we're cool. really happy about it. So now I think we're going to see you live right now. Right. And after that, we're going to see Carcass. And yeah, see you then. Yeah, Moçada, we're Sepultura from Brazil, and uh, you tune in the Gods of Grind special here on MTV 
and looking to see the most heavy, intense program. Take care.